This is the next fest demo for Abiotic Factor. I think I'm pronouncing that right. Abiotic Factor? Abiotic Factor. I don't know. Uh, this game is like if Half-Life, the original Half-Life, was a co-op survival game. Uh, the only time that I've played it, I actually played it with several friends from work, uh, and one of them was hosting it. And so I'm pretty sure that if I start the game now, it'll start me over at the beginning after the tutorial in my own, like on my own server, basically, with my own save. I don't know if that's true, though. I don't know what's going on. Uh, I've actually forgotten. Like, we played it last week, and so I've forgotten most of the controls and things. Hopefully, I'll pick them up again pretty fast. Let's hit enter the facility and find out what happens. Start new game. Uh, my world should have a name. What should my world be named? I'll call it Twitch. Single player only? Sure. Yeah, let's just not invite anybody else. Let's just, let's, let's just start our own little game here. Okay, so in Abiotic Factor, your character is saved on a per-world basis. So basically, I'm going to keep my appearance no matter what, but each game that I play with this character, they have different stuff. So it's not like, I don't know, I think like in Valheim, you can bring your character from another game into somebody else's game, and they'll have all their inventory with them and stuff. Not in this game. In this game, each player is sort of remembered spe uh, separately. Okay, so you're basically recreating your character from scratch, and you're deciding what skills and things you're going to start with. Uh, so I'm not exactly sure what I need. I, it does make sense to maybe go with a biomedical engineer if I'm not sure how good I'm going to be at survival, um, because I'll start with a bunch of first aid. Um, but I could go summer intern and basically have all of my skill points or whatever starting points for free. Um, and I guess I could also be a defense analyst if I want to be better at combat. You know, and maybe if I'm by myself without a lot of friends to just, like, swarm on the monsters, maybe I should go defense analyst. It doesn't leave me a lot of starting points, though, because I'm so good at everything. Um, does anybody else get combat benefits? I mean, kinesiologists get some extra strength. I'm not sure. And blunt melee. Yeah, okay, let's go with uh, kinesiologist. They'll be better at melee combat, which will be early game stuff anyway. And then I can do some Zomboid style point buy of traits. So for instance, if I wanted a fanny pack, I could do that. I think that means that I will start with like more inventory. But to buy that, I would need to be like a slow learner, for instance. I can't learn recipes via sharing, nor by picking things up other people have crafted. Oh, you know what? That's fine. So yeah, they actually have this really kind of cool recipe unlocking system. We'll show you that. Um, and there's a recipe unlocking system for doing things by yourself, but then you can also share recipes with other people. But since this is single player anyway, like, slow learner doesn't have as many problems. So I think I'll go with this. Fanny pack and slow learner. <laughs> Together, that just... It feels like that creates a character that I've seen before uh, in a movie or something. Probably kind of an insensitive character. Um, but we'll just go with this anyway. Uh, yes, I am ready to enter the lab in Abiotic Factor. Okay, so the setup is I'm an employee at a weird, creepy, like, maybe government, maybe corporate laborato laboratory. I'm not sure. I don't think we've met. Everybody looks like a Half-Life character. Um, I can get a snack if I want to. Here, I'm going to buy a snack. Yeah, I spent some money on a snack. I got four bucks. Let's buy Let's buy a soda. Root bear. Yeah, I was just a normal day. Just a normal day here at the lab. What's this? Oh, some clothing. Nice. <gasps> I know how to make bandages and stuff. That's great. What's that? Oh, a power socket. I'll learn how to use that later. Okay, so I think work is this way. Oh, but I can't open this door. So let's... Um, ooh, uh, there's some stuff in here. Let's take it. Okay, there's some... Do I, do I want to be in here? I'm nervous about being in here. Looks like somebody might have blocked it off on purpose. Oh, okay. Well, by the way, you can use toilets in this game, but only if you have to go to the bathroom. Oh, a janitor's closet. A chef hat. That seems valuable. Papers. Cloth. All right. Yeah. Oh, 
everything here looks normal. Hmm. So Orathaus is threatening to make me play Outer Worlds, um, which is fine. I, I think, so I liked Outer Worlds. I think my problem with Outer Worlds was just that I started playing it like a checklist and I was ruining my own fun. Um, but I have played it before and, and did enjoy it. So yeah, so if you um, spend channel points to force me to play Outer Worlds, I won't, I won't resent you for it. Uh, okay. So, I think... Yes, I can dismantle vents. Oh, and get some metal scraps out of them. Oh, and a calculator. That's cool. I'm just going to grab everything I possibly can. Can I... Oh, can I dismantle this one too? Excellent. Do these all lead different places? I think my co co-workers and I all went different... Oops. All went different directions. Oh, these do go different places. Okay. Let's go over here. So I'm just collecting as much crap as I can. I mean, you can definitely think of this as being a, uh, ugh. like, a typical survival game. You know, you, like, you're collecting a lot of resources. You're going to be crafting stuff. But the thing that's novel about this game is that instead of being... Ooh. There's an enemy I might want to sneak past. Or just avoid entirely... Anyway, the thing I was going to say was, most survival games are either set in an apocalypse or in a wilderness. And I love that they've chosen to make a survival game in a novel area. Okay, so I feel like I would like to have some kind of weapon in my hands before I deal with that guy. And I do not have anything like a weapon. Now, there are a few things that I can potentially make. And actually, let's have a look, since I'm hiding in a nice little vent. Let's have a look at their recipe system, which I think is really interesting and weird and clever. Okay, so I can make a net out of cloth. That is a recipe that I start out unlocked. So let's do that. So I've made three nets, actually. There's a little number here that says that uh, you can make three nets. But the crafting bench, I've never made one of those before. And so I need to figure out what it's made out of. And so what they show me here is like, okay, there are three ingredients to make a crafting bench. And they each belong to three different types. So I need to figure out which of these items fill in the slots. Now, there's only one yellow item on the list here, so that clearly goes there. And then I'm betting that it's made out of duct tape and, let's say, metal scrap. Aha! I was wrong on purpose. Actually, it's a pipe. And now I've got the crafting bench. So basically, I think what they're simulating here is the thing that you used to do in like very early Minecraft, where you would be just like trying to intuit the arrangement of resources that it takes to make something. Like, how do I make a sword? Well, maybe it's like this. And you would just like put things together on the crafting grid and see if they worked. That's basically what they're asking you to do here. They're saying, here, there's this thing called a energy brick. So of these items, power supply unit, tech scrap, circuit board, and keyboard, I bet it's not keyboard. Which of these do you put together to make an energy brick? Is it these four? Nope, it's the fan. So they make you experiment with the items. You don't have to expend items. But they make you experience, uh, like experiment with the idea of each of these items. Uh, to figure out, you know, what you can do. So, okay. Now that I've got this net, actually, I think... I think I can do this. So let's net it. And then... Stop, 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 stop. Stop! There we go. Yes! A piece of animal. Okay. And then this one's already dead, I think. Yeah, and it's not harvestable in any way. I've got a carbuncle. Anyone want a carbuncle? Hmm. Oh, hey. Uh, Magic Man joined us. Welcome, Magic Man. And, uh, okay, so Ornithos has claimed the Outer Worlds as a game to force me to play. So we will give that a try at some point later on. Probably after I get through all the next fest demos I want to play. So similarly, stomp this guy. So I like that they've sort of given me 
a weapon early on in the game that is just barely a weapon. <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah, this is kind of a weapon, but not really. It kind of actually reminds me of another game I played around Next Fest, which was um, Demon Spore. Here, let's package this up so I can put it somewhere else if I want to. Demon Spore also, it, it starts you with a, um, a fire extinguisher, which very similar to this net. Ooh, a screwdriver. That's pretty important. Similar to this net, you know, all you can do is disable enemies to then kill them in melee. You don't actually damage enemies with your initial weapon. I kind of like that both of these teams had really similar intuitions about like what, what the right way to start would be. Okay, so we're going to dismantle these pipes because they give us pipes and pressure gauges. And you'll notice that new recipe ideas are occurring to me. I probably don't need to have this out. Let's just take all these pipes off the wall. I mean, clearly, people just installed a bunch of pipes on the wall. Oh, gosh! Oh, no. Oh, no. I did a bad job of that. Let's try that again. Oh, shoot. Hey, do better, idiot. Okay, he keeps jumping over my freaking net. There. Oh, you jerk. All right, all right, all right. Let's, um, let's eat some farm puffs. Does that help? Okay, I think it did help. I think it made because my health is on the lower left. My body was looking uh, red, and now my body is looking yellow. I wonder if some uh, soda will help, too. Yes, my body is looking even less yellow. Okay, so I'm out of nets now, so I should definitely, definitely craft some more nets. Craft a net... And then let's look at this. Okay, so the idea for a vacuum. Let's go energy brick. Carbuncle? Because it sucks things in. Pipe and pressure gauge. Vacuum. What does that do? Sucking up items and small critters. Oh, okay. Neat. Cool. We'll keep that in mind for when we've got a crafting bench. Um... I think I've found everything here. Ooh, flashlight. Doom, doom. And we got more pipes. More pipes. We got all the pipes we could ever want. Actually, I wonder. Can I arm myself with a pipe? No, no. They specifically make it a curvy pipe. What about... Yeah, and I think I can't use this as a weapon either. I think I can just fix or dismantle things. That's an email terminal. I'm pretty sure there's not much I can do. I mean, yeah, I bet there's lore in there. I don't think there's anything mechanical I need in there. All right. So now we're in the kitchen. Oh. Something moving around in there. Let's try to sneak up on it if we can. Oh, hey. Oh, oh, there's another one. There we go. Oh, crap. I got a... There we go. Okay. Dang it. Always. For some reason, I'm really good at throwing a net underneath one of those guys as they jump. Oh, oh, I got a knife now. Got a knife. Okay, I'm just going to take the chef's gear. Take the frying pan and the pork chop. And I can cook here if I want to. Don't know if I want to. Yay, clothing scraps. Uh, oh. There we go. It's absolutely Siberian. Is that my voice? 
Oh. I can't go on. Too cold. Oh. Okay, so that was my voice, and there's a temperature gauge next to my health. I can eat all of this ice cream if I want. Um, okay, so one advantage of playing this with friends is y you have multiple inventories. Um, so I've just collected so much crap, and there's no way I can use it all. Um, and it, it said... It said fanny pack on my traits. Does that mean that I have... I don't remember how much uh, inventory I'm supposed to have by default. Oh, it's... Oh, two extra hot bar slots. The slots are at the bottom. Okay, so healing syringe and splint. I've got no room for them. So... Can't open it from this. What? I went in there. This is where I want to be. Okay, hold on. How do I get in there? Button? Oh, wait, hold on. I need... Okay, okay, hold on. How do I drop things? Okay, okay, drop. Okay, because I need nets. I need nets... Where was nets? Craft 1x nets. Can I craft more x nets? All right. I got six nets. Hello. Over here. Excuse me, sir. There we go. Oh, you're new. Looks like that little pest damaged the power system. Can you get someone to fix it? But hurry, would you? I'm not enjoying standing around out here. It was hours last time. And I don't feel safe at all. Okay, so he wants me to open the cafeteria door. That requires an energy brick. And an energy brick requires a, um, a crafting table. So let's look at how we make a crafting table. Oh, wait, first. Carbuncle crown? Excuse me? Okay, well, hold on. Let's just, really quick. Rubber bands and plastic? Nope. Duct tape. I don't know what that is. Um, it's head armor. Okay, great. Plastic shield. Okay, so I think that's this and this and... This? Maybe? Yes, plastic shield. So I think when you're carrying it, you take less damage from enemies. Not that great for fighting enemies. Um, storage crate. Yes, please. I bet that's plastic and wood. Okay. There's nothing more important in a game than your storage crate. Um, and actually, can I like disassemble this desk? I don't think so. All right, so let's see if we can create a crafting bench. We need a power supply unit to create a crafting bench. Um, and I don't have any inventory space left, so let's... Can I drop just all of these? Is this still 16 pipes? It is. Okay, cool. Good. I was afraid it was going to spray pipes everywhere, but no, apparently not. Good. Uh, let's also... Actually, I can just place the toolbox someplace. Actually, and this is a container. <gasps> it's a container. Let's put some stuff in the toolbox. Like my backup thing and that thing and more pipes. I don't know. Oh, let's definitely wear a chef's hat. I mean, we're obviously, obviously. And then chef apron. Totally. We're wearing that. Is, is, is there, does that have any armor? I, I don't think so. I think this is just decorative. Um, and what else do I want to put in there? A pork chop? I might need the pork chop. Carbuncle? Tech scrap? What, I, we'll put the other hat in there. All right. All right. So we filled our toolbox. We got room in our inventory. So now we're going to take apart this computer. Oh, it looks like it's being censored. Like... It's a naked computer. So it's important to remember that resting is key. 
Is this not actually the right thing to do? Simply taking a moment to sit down, even on the floor, will give you the energy boost you need to get through your day. Maybe, oh, maybe I need to use a hammer on While it instead. In any form helps to healing, yes, this is what I needed to do. I think you can disassemble some things. Getting adequate rest is with the screwdriver, but a productive and valuable member of the team at the Cape Cascade Research Facility. Okay, so what I just did was I disassembled some computers, got some power supplies, and with those power supplies, I can now craft a crafting bench. So I've crafted a crafting bench, and now I've got it in my inventory, and I can set it. Let's set it here. And then I need to use the screwdriver to build it. <laughs> so Spectre Saunders just showed up and was like, hey, is this skater to K3? Joking. Uh, just pointing out that probably suspects that everybody, every stream probably has someone that says that. Surprisingly not, actually. You know what? I really believed, I truly believed I was going to be able to get behind this thing and get the power cable. And it turns out I cannot. So this whole thing was a terrible plan. So I'm going to move the toolbox over here. I'm going to pick up that spilt loot bag. I'm going to put the loot away again. What did I put in there? I had a hat. I had my backup screwdriver. And I had the frying pan. Then I'm going to package this thing up. Pick it up. Let's set it here. And then I think I'm going to have space to plug it in. Because you have to plug stuff like this, you have to plug it into the wall. So you can only build it in places where there is a plug. So grab the power and connect. There we go. Now it's plugged in. And now we can use the crafting bench to make all kinds of stuff. Like a repair and salvage station, which I guess probably has this and that. And I don't know, this and maybe that? Nope. It has this. So yeah, I can make that eventually. I could also make a makeshift battery. Is that this and this and this? Yep, there's a makeshift battery. What else could I make? Ooh, ooh, makeshift backpack. This is happening. Pipes and cloth, right? Okay, we need that. We're going to make that. Let's make that first. Makeshift backpack. Craft 1X. Oh my gosh, my life is about to get so much better. Let's put this backpack on. Boom! Three three more slots. Oh. I thought that was going to be better. Okay, well, that's fine. Um, other people had backpacks when I was playing uh, with my friends, and uh, I never got one, so I didn't know. I didn't know how disappointing backpacks would be. But, but, we're actually here to make an energy brick, right? With the other power supply, circuit board, case fan, and tech scrap. Let's make ourselves an, a brick. And then, oh, what? What's happening? You need to open the door now. Why? What's what, what's the problem? Every, everything seems okay to me. Just get it open. Okay. Here, here. Oh no! Okay. So we can net his face, and then stab, 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 stab. Oh, 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 oh! oh he got out of the net. No, 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 no. Get netted in your face. Oh, gosh. He's... This guy's tough. Okay, okay. Hold on, hold on. Um, nope. Ah, oh, that was the last net. Oh. Okay, okay. Get hammered. Okay, okay. Now, bandages. Bandages. I forgot to craft. How do you craft ba bandages? Yes. Okay. Okay. Let's let's bandage. No. No. <laughs> if I had preemptively crafted bandages, 
we would not be in this situation. Okay, I've respawned. I have the stuff that was in my hot slots. I do not have the stuff that was in my backpack. But it's okay. I didn't spawn that far away. There's my dead body. Items retrieved. We're back to normal. Let's just pretend this didn't happen. You are a bad animal. I am going to use your body for horrible things. Okay. I, I went through all my nets. I'm definitely going to need to grab some more nets. Um, okay, so we've got a whole complex that's open now. But... I need to figure out what else I want. Um, so I'm assuming... Yeah, I still have my backpack. All that stuff. So let's definitely make some more nets. Where was nets? Nets. Make some more nets. I've already got bandages. Um, is there anything else that I feel like I need? What do you do at the repair and salvage station? Well, I don't have enough coils and anvils, so nothing yet. But it's allow it allows repairing and salvaging of items. So I'm thinking there's entirely new resources I can get by salvaging some things that I've got. Um, oh, but one other thing I might be able to make is storage? No, I need plastic scrap and wood planks to make storage. So I've got this toolbox that I brought with me, but that's about it. And oh. Pick up all this stuff. So I think when I pick up the calculator, I think it becomes tech scrap. Also, by the way, I don't know why some of these items are yellow. I'm assuming... Nah. All right. Now, I don't actually know if I explored all the good places to explore over here. I mean, I eventually ended up in this room, right? Which I think was the intent. I'm not sure if there's more places I should have tried to go. Oh, hey, here's the first aid kit. Maybe if I, maybe I should have opened that originally. Okay, I'm going to bring that with me and install it. Okay. So for right now, this is my base, right? I think, you know, we'll worry about if maybe this is the best place for a base later. Right now... We'll keep this here. Yeah, at some point, I should eat this. Not this. At some point, I should eat this pork chop before it gets too nasty. Attention. Enhanced security protocols are now in effect. Please locate security personnel. And Ooh, plastic scrap. Evacuation procedures. Ooh, I can take a map. Uh, does that mean I can look at a map? I'm here, mate. Oh, what? This guy wants to talk to me. Look, I don't know what's going on. They don't tell me squat on a good day, and this isn't a good day. But if the big voice says, get out, I'd do what she says. Elevators are dead, so head for the main tunnel in manufacturing on room two. There's maps over there. But me, I'm staying so for some reason that guy having a New Zealand accent is just I don't know he just it just seems right it feels very right um, okay let's see what else we can find in here so Paroxicus is saying that uh, I would make a terrible serial killer because I, I would be too audible I because I'm just saying stab 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 while I'm stabbing someone and I would probably get caught uh, that seems fair Okay, so I'm opening this, but it's just back to a place that I've been to, so I don't know what that was for. Um, I can read some emails. Rollerblades. You know what? Whatever. I'll read stuff later. I can't read. Um, I'm a scientist. So Ranith Court, by the way, when I was asking why things were yellow, Ranith Court says, oh, you can probably climb them. <laughs> Uh, which is a, of course, a reference to 
the discourse on Twitter right now about video games. <laughs> okay. Um... Oh, yes. Can I just... Oh, is it dead? Nice. Oh, my inventory's <laughs> full. Wait, is it cold in there? Oh, it's a server room. Of course it's cold in there. Okay. Again, so I'm out of space in my inventory. I mean, I could definitely use up my sh my uh, my hammer. That would clear some space. Oh, hey, Alice, what's up? I have seen death. Oh, okay. Um, I'm sure you'll be fine. Uh... Yeah, so I can pick up things that will stack in my inventory, but I can't pick up things that are brand new. Like raw pest. What I'm hoping I'll find... That was another pest. Um, you know what? I'm going to need... Okay. One thing that annoys me... Oh, wait. Was this here before? One thing that annoys me sometimes in video games like this is when they make storage difficult to come by. Like, eventually I need all of the things that I'm picking up, I will eventually be able to pick them all up. And I will eventually want every single one of them. And so it's not actually an interesting, expressive decision for me to decide which things I'll carry with me and which things I won't. Like, I need them all, really, in theory. And so... That's not an interesting decision. It's just an annoying thing that I need to worry about. So yeah, let's put some things in this container over here. Let's hold on to our bandages. And what else will I later into it that I will find here? Um, I don't know. I guess alien bits. We'll put some alien bits in with our medical supplies. That's great. And then maybe I'll, you know, I've got some duct tape over here anyway. Maybe I'll just drop some duct tape. Drop the rest of my pipes. Why not? Um, keep all my tools here. I'm trying to collect plastic scrap and I'm trying to collect wood um, because that's what's going to let me make a box. But yeah, so like just being really stingy with the box, like, no, no, no. You've got to get deeper into the complex before you can have your first box. I'm just like, no, stop that. Give me the box. The box is absolutely basic necessity like i can't feel good about scavenging in your game unless i have a box to put all the stuff in give me the box give me to the box right now <laughs> so okay so i've got to figure out again like all of the resources that i used to make boxes the previous time i played this game they were all scavenged by other players and so i'm not sure where, where to find a box or where to find wood and more plastic scrap. I found some plastic scrap in a trash can. Where was I a minute ago? Was I in here? Yeah, okay. Ah! What was that? Oh, biggin. Okay, there's a biggin in here. So let's um, get some pens. Oh, gosh. Always! There we go. It is so hard to hit these guys. All right. I'm really hoping the biggin doesn't find me, though. Because I don't know how I'll deal with him exactly. There's another flashlight. Do I need another one of those? Um, so, yeah. I guess I got some phones and some keep. Oh, gosh. Okay. The thing this is not getting me is wood. But maybe I can take apart an office desk or something? Ooh, money and more duct tape. Uh, yeah, I could disassemble a desk. Nope, 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 nope. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. Not dealing with you. Oh, there's a trash can right over there. Not dealing with you right now. Someday. Someday when I'm feeling tougher. 
I will fight that thing. But that first one literally killed me, so I'm, I'm not gonna right now. Oh, wait. Did I already open this? Paper scrap. Ooh, paper scrap. Ah, there's a tram I'll be able to take eventually. Okay, so Paroxicus is actually a is asking me to like explain what's actually going on with the yellow paint discourse uh, on Twitter. So b basically, the idea is, I mean, you've probably, you know, if you play video games, you've probably seen games where people will basically use like bright yellow paint or or, or some other really really recognizable marker to show you which items can be climbed, which items can be broken, which items can be interacted with. And it's almost like just a big interact with me sign painted on things. And there's some players who, when they see that, they roll their eyes and say, oh, video games are so fake and handholdy. This doesn't look real. And, you know, and they're, and they're talking down to me as a player. I could figure out this is climbable. You're being so stupid, you know. And meanwhile, a lot of developers are like, no, you don't understand. When we play test our games, we make things as obvious as we possibly can, and we still have to watch play testers just bumping their faces into things and having no idea what to interact with, what to do, and we have to paint up the environment in order for people to enjoy the game at all. Um, and so those are sort of the two the two sides. One saying this is dumb and handholdy, and you're talking down to us, and we don't like it. And the other side... Okay, by the way, I'm going to try to break this. Let's see. I'm going to package this. Oh, it broke. Yay, metal scrap. Um, uh, and, and the other side being, we have to do this because we have witnessed you all being so stupid. <laughs> so you do need this whether you think you do or not is basically sort of the attitude. And really, I, I, I think the real, solu the real answer is somewhere in between. I mean, yeah, so no matter what you do, in a video game, somebody is not going to be figuring, they're going to figure it out. And you do have to accept a certain amount of, oh, that actually worked. A certain amount of players just not knowing what's going on. Um, and, and just say, if that's just, yeah, the cost of doing business. Some of those players, you know what? They can look it up on the internet. Ooh, makeshift frying pan. Um, and, and that's fine. You know, if that's, if that's what it takes, that's totally fine. Um, and then also, you know, there there are less obvious ways. Ooh, wood. Yes. Oh, inventory full. Screw you. All right. Um, and there's also ways to sort of create visual language in a game that does make it clear what you can interact with without having to use something as heavy-handed as yellow paint. But it takes a lot of time in playtesting. Like, you know, like, I think that you know, a lot of the stories about the development of Portal, for instance, are about how Portal has a very clear visual language about what you can interact with and what you can't. But it took a lot of iteration and practice and playtesting the game and changing things again and again and again to get there. And so yellow paint is usually this kind of solution that developers will use when they don't have any time and they find out that something is confusing. Like, they, they do a playtest and they learn that something they're doing is hard for a typical player to get, to get through, and they don't have time to iterate on it five times until they find the perfect balance of it's it looks authentic it feels you know like an immersive world and players in immediately understand what everything is that they can interact with um you know because you notice like, like people you know will often cite like say half-life 2 as an example of a very naturalistic world but you'll notice all of the crates that contain something have the same yellow label on the corner they have yellow paint in half-life 2 they just spent the time getting subtle about it um you know to sort of work out what would actually what's the bare minimum that we can do to make sure every player recognizes it but also um that it doesn't seem unnatural um and so but yeah so a lot of times when you see yellow paint what you're not seeing you're not seeing oh dumb developers who can't figure out how to do no usually what you're seeing is stressed out developers without a lot of time saying okay look no one's going to be able to play this game unless we fix this problem and so we got to fix it in the way we can fix it right now, which is not our favorite way, but it's a way that will work. And the game working is going to be more important than anything else. Okay, so let's get this going. And yeah, and also, I mean, in some cases, like, it just there are just very different games out there that have very different, make very different demands on the player. By the way, look, I'm making a box. Make very different demands on the player. 
um, and have very different requirements. Like there are, you know, there are some games where the whole art style is so presentational that it just, you know, the markup on the ledges just looks like it belongs. It looks just as, you know, normal as everything else in the game, which is really fakey. Just everything in the game looks really fakey, but that's fine. That's just part of the style of the game. It's okay. Like it's not a problem, you know. Um, I'm just gonna put everything I freaking can in here. Um, keep that out, actually. Um, all of the stuff that is not a tool. Ah, flashlights too, whatever. And then we'll pick up more stuff. What was I saying a second ago? I don't know. I've lost track. Oh, this is a weapon. Oh, nice. Cool, I didn't realize this was a weapon. I should disassemble more tables. This is great. Um... But but yeah, so I, I think I think I've basically basically figured it out. So wait, so Cogs is like toggles. You know, uh, the answer is not to impose an answer. Oh wait, ooh, here's this guy. Okay, hold on. Excuse me, sir. Get clubbed. Oh, this guy's even worse than the last guy. And there's also a thing grabbing me. Okay, th oh, die, die, die. Okay, okay, oh, I'm bleeding, I'm bleeding. This time I will not die from the bleeding. Okay, no longer bleeding. And I've got a pork chop. We're eating the pork chop. Okay, and I think... Okay, the pork chop didn't heal me as much as I expected it to, but whatever. Let's chop this guy up. But yeah, like, I was having, you know, a, um... Oh, oh, a skull, a drumstick, a chop, a carbuncle. Great. Anyway, so so Co uh, Cogs was saying toggles. Toggles are the answer. Like like you know it, you 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 know let the player choose whether they want to have really obvious markup or not. So actually, this came up. I was discussing it with uh, folks on my team. Ah, getting thirsty. Um, a little bit earlier, and I'm gonna gr go grab some soda real quick. Um. And I actually asked, like, you know, if we were to do, and, you know, this was just, we weren't talking about anything specific in State of Decay 3, just the general idea of, this is snacks, I want drinks, um, the general idea of yellow paint. And I was like, you know, what if you were making a game that had, like, you know, climbing markup, like, you know, you need to be able to climb a ledge or something like that, and you put yellow paint on it, like, would it be possible to make the yellow paint conditional? Um... Like, could you make it so that somebody could turn the yellow paint off? And the problem is, if you made the yellow paint look good in the game, that means you'd have to integrate it with the art in such a way that, no, you could not extract it easily. Like, basically, if you wanted to put yellow paint in for people, you would have to have it be really fakey yellow paint that just sort of like, or, or whatever. Some, some I'm using yellow paint as sort of a broad term for the type of just really obvious markup that we're talking about. Um you would have to make it extremely fake. Uh, because if you tried to make it real, if you tried to make it look in any way like good in the environment, then toggling it off would be impossible. Uh, like, like, because you know, it would just, it would just look like garbage to toggle it off. So let's stick that in there. And actually, let me grab those flashlights out and stick them in there. Um, and then I can stick wood in here, oil, neat, um, paper scraps, plastic, wait, I'm holding radioactive stuff, is this all radio, is this gonna kill me slowly, I don't know, whatever, who cares about my death, um, put that in my inventory, I'm not gonna take a bite out of it or anything, um, so yeah, so like genuinely, like 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 it's it's not that easy. Like if we wanted to make it a toggleable thing, that means we would have to let have somebody toggle on an accessibility feature that makes the entire world look fake, and that would actually not feel like a good accessibility feature. Um, and so so that's not an easy solution. It's not an easier obvious solution. Oh, interesting. So I assumed. Those guys would be just as easy to kill. Uh, 
<laughs> I assume these guys would be just as easy to kill when they're not netted. It's when they're netted, but that is not the case. Okay, so I'm going to package this. Oh, and it actually packaged. Okay, that's not what I intended. Break this monitor. Oh, coil. Okay, I, I, I literally can't carry all this stuff. Um, maybe I can. Okay, so that coil that I picked up, or maybe something else that I picked up, gave me a bunch of new recipes. Oh, my hammer's broken. My hammer's broken. I need to figure out how to make a repair bench for my hammer. Let's see if I can figure that out. Let's go back to my base and see if I can figure that out. I've never done that before. <gasps> When uh, Proxica saw that my, some of my stuff was radioactive, he was like, oh, welcome to the new age. Welcome to the new age. To the new age. The new age. Um, so, so, yeah. By the way, I'm sorry. Like, I keep trying to, like, get into these topics, and then I get distracted and uh, completely forget what I was talking about. So, hopefully, no one was really trying to, like, super follow what was going on coming out of my head right now. Um, okay. So if I can build a repair bench, there are so many things I can make now. I'm not going to worry about that right now. Pipe, two coils, six duct tape, and an anvil. I do not know how to make an anvil. I've got one coil. Now, can I make another box? <laughs> Boxes are all I care about. Plastic scrap and wood plank. Do we have that in here? Uh, we have one plastic scrap. Okay, so no. Let's let's put this desk here just so that I can try to break it again. Oh, come on. I want you to break. Can't I break it on purpose? So let's see here. So Cog says, can climbability based on height not be automatically marked up? It seems like there's a lot of unmarked up short things, while many too tall things are climbable in state of decay. Um, so yeah, so yes, theoretically, okay. So I guess once you successfully break, uh, like like break down an office desk, it just it just stays in good condition, and you can't undo that. Okay, fine, whatever. Um, I need to find a different desk then. I need more desk, like clubs. Oh, interesting. Recharging station. I need more clubs. I need more plastic because this is giving me wood. <laughs> and that's not enough. Whoa, whoa. Where did... Oh, come back. C come here. So, yeah, so it is possible, Cogs, for... Uh, Oh, yay, my skill. Um, it is possible for markup, like, to have, like, basically a, you know, level-building tool that automates uh, markup um, on things. And I think there might have even been a certain amount of automate. I don't know. I wasn't really involved in that part of developing State of Decay uh, 2, and so I don't know exactly what our tools were. There may have been a certain amount of automated stuff even going on there. But you also always want to give yourself the ability to to change it. You know, like 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 I auto perceive a distinct lack of it's absolutely Siberian. Dude, shush. Um you always want to give yourself the ability to correct it, right? Because there's there's always gonna be something that your automation misses, something it's not good at getting right. And you always want to make sure I'm feeling distinctly anhydrous. Uh, right. I needed a drink, didn't I? Well, let's see if there's a drink in here. Maybe somebody had... Oh, right. I just broke my weapon. That was smart. I definitely need a desk now. I need a desk thing. Oh, well, anyway. 
What was I saying? Who knows? Oh yeah, theoretically, it is possible to that that, that we might have even had a certain amount of um, what? Where did he go? Oh, he fell down there. That was great. We might have even had a certain amount of automation, but you have to do a certain amount of manu manual stuff too. There's going to be stuff your automation does not catch, and you can also theoretically do do a game where there is no markup and the character just detects the geometry and just can do stuff with geometry of a certain shape. That's another way you can do it too. Both of those solutions have downsides and complications that you have to worry about. Um, and so you always have to have manual tweaking as an option. And then once you... Oh gosh, I can't possibly fight this. Get away. Like, seriously, leave me alone. Ah, oh, this game is hard. <laughs> can I can I close this? No. I can close that. <sighs> oh no, I can't. <sighs> okay. Okay. Okay, I tried to close the door on it. Okay, you know, I just, I, I can't. I can't, I can't, I can't do it. I can't. Get, get away. Oh my gosh. I'm just trying to put enough things between me and this creature that it gives up. I mean, and what's the point of bandaging myself if he's eventually going to get me, right? Okay, let's bandage myself. Okay. I mean... I don't... I guess I've... Oh, what? Uh, what was he doing there? Oh, I, have, I originally came through here, didn't I? Oh, gosh. I just... You know what? Whatever. <laughs> I'm just gonna die. It's fine. We've been streaming for nearly an hour anyway. You've seen this game. You understand what's going on, right? We can be mauled by a creature. Restart. And it's alright. Okay, let me just finish the thought that I was having uh, with Cog. So yeah, so there's lots of different ways that you can handle markup in a game. You can place it all manually. You can have a tool that auto places, that tries to auto place it throughout the level. That will make mistakes, and you're going to need to have the way to a way to go in and manually clean it up afterwards. You can also have a game where the character just knows how to recognize different shapes and just does stuff with them. That's very difficult, and also that can screw up. And when it screws up, it screws up in real time rather than screwing up like in a place where it's easy to find and correct. Um, and it's so there's cost to all of these different methods. Um, and so I think a lot of the time, basically having some kind of automated process supplemented by manual uh, by manual tweaking is probably the most straightforward way to go. Uh, but even in that case, what you will find is exactly what you found, Cogs, which is a game in which there are, you know, especially if the game's got a really huge world, a game in which there are exceptions where, you know, uh, we put a bunch of markup everywhere, and but somehow both the automated system and somebody's uh, uh, attempts to place manual markup both screwed up and missed a spot where it looks to you like this should obviously be climbable, and it's not climbable. And the only thing we can do in that case is is, is try to write a bug, report a bug, and solve it. Unfortunately, individual cases like that, the chances of them bubbling up and actually getting onto somebody's plate are usually fairly slim at this stage, uh, you know, with, with a five-year-old game. So, sorry it took me this long to say all of that, but that is my response to what you were saying. <laughs> that was spread out across me getting panic attacked by a bunch of <laughs> monsters. So, there we go. Anyway, um... Orthaus wants to know what this record is over my shoulder. So this is the vinyl version of Ben Prunty's um, Into the Breach soundtrack. Uh, it's very good. I love this music. I, play, I still play this game all the time. Like, I've taken breaks from it, but right now I'm like intensely playing it on my phone anytime I, you know, am in the middle of something else that's boring. Um, and so, yeah, so it's a very good soundtrack. It's a very good game. Into the Breach, you should totally check it out. Um... <laughs> 
So Cogs and Paroxicus and Orthos are all very uh, supportive of me giving answers under duress, uh, which I appreciate because they're not the best answers when I'm doing it under duress. But uh, hopefully, I'm glad that you appreciate them anyway. Anyway, but that is abiotic factor. Uh, you saw me, you know, uh, dominating certain parts of it, struggling my brains out with other parts of it. But I gotta say, like, the thing you didn't get to see was me playing it with other people. And this was actually pretty fun to play with other people, partly because we were all splitting up, we all were filling our inventories with different things, and we were all able to collaborate. When somebody was hurt, somebody else would bring them a bandage, and, you know, pe we could gang up on these monsters. And we actually felt pretty effective. I was overwhelmed by this um and struggling and actually i probably would have played it a little bit more cautiously and slowly if i wasn't running around trying to entertain an audience um i might have been able to do a little bit better but either way i mean i was pretty overwhelmed but playing this with a bunch of friends is really fun so th this game it's got a lot of the same um sort of attraction as games like What's it called? The one where you work for a giant space octopus and you're out there on planets uh, trying to salvage things. And what is that called? What is that game? Somebody's going to come up with it. Lethal Company! That was the game. Thank you, Warathouse. So this is a lot like Lethal Company. It's got a lot of the same attraction as Lethal Company. It's got this sort of old school vibe to it. Um, deadly monsters. You're, you're in over your head. You can play it with a bunch of friends. Only this has also got like the full on like crafting system and stuff like that on top of it. And honestly, it's just it's just a friendlier game. They've really thought through the, the user experience. It all looks intentionally very, very old fashioned. Um, but it's got some really clever ideas in here. And so like this has got a lot of the same attractions as Lethal Company, but I found it more accessible than Lethal Company. Um, and so if you're into this kind of thing and you like this kind of setting uh, and you want some, you know, especially if you want some nostalgia for Half-Life, this is basically where Half-Life was a linear story told within a setting like this. This is a game within a setting like this where you're actually like playing the experience of living through a disaster like this um, on a different level from Half-Life. And I think that's a really clever idea and I'm glad that people made this game. So anyway, that's Abiotic Factor. And uh, I guess we're done with that. So let's wrap this up. And I don't know, maybe I've got time to play another thing. Let's, let's go play another thing before I wrap up the stream.